What's good, everybody? Happy Saturday. My name is Air Samurai, and welcome to the Air Samurai brand. All right, so today we're going to be doing something brand new, totally um, different from the past like four or five videos that I put on my channel. And we're going to be calling this the right now, tentatively, we're going to be calling this the Samurai Soul Session. What I mean by Soul Session is, is basically I'm going to be speaking straight from the heart. All right. So it's not going to be no edits and ain't going to be no cuts. It ain't going to be no nothing. It's just going to be right from what it is that I'm saying. I'm probably going to mess up a whole bunch of stuff grammatically and maybe a little bit of pronunciation here or there, whatever it is. But, you know, it is what it is. That's part of the reason why it's the Samurai Soul Session. It's basically going to be a way for me to kind of like speak on some of the things that's been happening in the community, the state of the game, um, where the game could go and how I've been feeling about things lately. For anybody new to the channel, brand new to the channel, um, I play, I've been playing 2K for years now. I've been playing probably every single 2K that ever came out. Um, and yeah, um, my favorite characters to play with are anything, uh, you know, slashing, uh, slashing shot creator or shot creating slasher. This year I made a shot creating slasher six foot six because for some reason, 2K decided that slashing shot creators that are 6'6 cannot have elite contact dunks, but 6'4 slashing shot creators can, which makes absolutely no sense to me. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but anyway, let me join this party real quick. My man Pac just sent me an invite. I'm about to join him, see what's, see what's popping. And so um, I think the topic that I want to address right now it's mainly the one that revolves around um, Swante putting out a tweet, uh, basically asking for Mike Wing to come back because Mike Wing hasn't tweeted <laughs> in in eons, it, what it seems like. Um, but, uh, you know, anybody unfamiliar with it, Mike Wing was tweeting a lot heavy at the beginning of the game, then the game dropped, then he kind of went radio silent for a little bit. So uh, Swante sent out a message and basically said, you know, Mike Wayne, please come back. Mike Wayne responded and said, what's up, Swante? So obviously he knows who he is, which, you know, I kind of figured, you know, um, but it is weird because if the developers know who Swante is, you know, my opinion is why he don't have a YouTube logo over his head, like he should have one, um, you know, but I don't know. That's a whole nother topic for another day. But um, basically, Swante, you know, put out a series of tweets basically talking about like how to like th the fact that the stretch big thing has to be nerfed. And he was basically saying, you know, the contested shots in general for anybody, it, it just can't be like they shouldn't be shooting over people's face while they're standing right there. Um, you know, I think, you know, proximity matters, but what what. 2K is failing to realize every year, which is what a lot of people's gripe with the game is, is that if I'm right up underneath this man, even if I don't have my hands up, there should be some sort of form of bothering his shot. Who do you know shoots with somebody right underneath their legs and is not bothered by the shot whatsoever? Like, you know, it, you, you've got to have elements of balance within the game. Um, you know, and, and the, the truth be told, the contest system is just broken altogether. You know, if I'm right up underneath the dude, even if I have my hands down, he shouldn't be able to pull a, a, a clean jump shot. To me, see, and this is the thing, I think a lot of people forget this. Back in 2K11, if you pulled the jump shot and the man was too close to you, you didn't shoot your regular jumper. You shot a contested jumper. Now, the contested jumpers were falling if you knew how to shoot them in 2K11. But if you fast forward to today, right, there isn't even like there is contested jump shot animations in the game, but they don't trigger when they should. Like when a dude is too close to you, that animation should trigger, you know, and then it should make it harder for you to hit that shot. Do you know what I'm saying? Or not be able to, to me, if it's contested, you know, a heavy contest shouldn't be at all. And in my opinion, if a person's right underneath your legs, like and they have their hands up, that should be an automatic heavy contest. It shouldn't have to be a, I got a time when my hands is here and all this other kind of crap. Like, I'm right here. I'm playing defense on this guy. First of all, if he pulls up, he should shoot an awkward jump shot because I'm right up underneath him. So I am contesting, you know, 
especially if I'm holding a left trigger whatsoever, like I'm still contesting. And then if I put my hands up, that should be a heavy contest. And even a light contest, like those light contests shouldn't even fall like that. Nobody should be able to shoot with somebody else in their face. And I think that that's something that a lot of people are missing about this game. It's the reason why stretch bigs are running rampant because, you know, it just it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Like there's there's no skill in it. Um, but yes, yeah, Swante put that tweet out, and then Mike Wing basically said that he was gonna. He said there was a shooting buff coming tomorrow morning. Let him know what's what. Um, I think the 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 hardest thing for Mike Wing and the crew over at 2K is is they they know how to make a good basketball game, but they keep trying to cater to people that don't know, don't understand basketball. They keep trying to do it over and over and over and over again. And um, they keep trying to cater to people that don't want a game that's balanced. And I'll, I'll sum it up right here, and I could probably end a video on this note. But I, I was talking to Pac a couple of minutes ago, and I was basically explaining to him, you know, my kind of gripe with the whole situation and everything. And I asked him what kind of game is 2K. He said it was an arcade game. Right. But that that really was an answer I was looking for. I was looking for the deeper answer at its core. 2K, when it comes to my player and all that kind of stuff, 2K has become an MMORPG. There's no other way to slice that. It. It's an MMORPG where you can compete, get on the court, whatever it is. But everybody has a class or race. In this case, it's an archetype or archetype mix. But I think what 2K keeps missing is what fail, what makes MMORPGs work, right? The thing that makes MMORPGs work is when each class or each race in an MMORPG basically has things that define it and things that things that is really good at and things that is not so great at and then your leveling up system allows you to enhance the things that you're already good at right so become more dominant and then the things that you're not that great at it allows you to increase but it never gets to a point where the things that you're not that great at like if somebody attacks those areas that you've just built up so much to the point where it doesn't affect you that's not how RPGs, that's not how MMORPGs, that's not how any role-playing game works. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, I just think that there's a lot of that concept missing from the game. You know, if everyone complains about the, you know, the stretches and the sharps and stuff like that, rightfully so, because what what i think 2k is missing is they're they're missing the promotion of good basketball fundamentals in a solid game and that's the reason why people spam in my career because there's the, the game is not solid but from a basketball fundamental standpoint if you think about it right all everybody that makes any kind of form of sharp they love to shoot from extra extra deep right what if i told you that shooting from extra deep when you're not hot is a bad shot even if you are a sharpshooter, how would you feel? Would you still shoot from deep? If your answer is yes, you are a person that doesn't understand basketball, and you're also a person that doesn't really understand the concept of the fundamental of a game that requires skill. Shooting from deep, right? If you're not hot and you shoot from deep, and this is just my my theory, if you're not hot, if you have sharp in your build and you shoot from deep, you should automatically go cold because that will in turn nerf people's decision making to just stand out from damn near half court and just fire up threes. That kind of garbage has got to stop. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, If you're a slasher, and you drive to the paint and there's three people already waiting down there and you dunk and miss, you should instantly go cold. Why? Because that is poor decision making. Do you understand what I'm saying? As a slasher, right? 
you want to your your core thing is to get to the basket. But if there's three people already sitting there, right? I'm not talking about late help coming over to try to block. If somebody's already sitting down, if there's three people already sitting down there, then as a slasher, it's a bad idea to go down there. It doesn't matter how great you are at slashing. It just doesn't make sense. So if there were actual penalties that rewarded or, or penalized people who had archetypes who made idiotic decisions and they were quick penalties right away very noticeable changes then you'd have a much more fun much more balanced game you'd have a game where people had to think their way through and the games would be competitive and it would be fun they wouldn't just be somebody sitting 10,000 screens and somebody firing up a three behind it right even the fact of people setting screens right why is it that a person setting the screen right they don't lose stamina they don't get tired the jump shot's not affected but the person getting hit the screen loses stamina to be able to play defense guard up and all that other kind of stuff it just there's just no there's no rhyme or reason for it you know like if you're gonna set 100 screens in a game you should be so dog tired at the end of the game it should be hard for you to get a shot up because you spent all your time on the court holding b letting people run into your chest knocking down your energy knocking down your stamina and it's just it's simple things like that that, you know, if you put if you implement them to the game, it makes the game fun. It makes the game skill based. It makes the game to a point where people have to think their way through the game. You get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that sharps should it be able to shoot from deep. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is is that if they're gonna shoot from deep, super deep, they need to be hot, because that is what makes sense. A, a, if you're a sharpshooter, you already know that you can shoot the three ball. So why are you standing four, you know, like 20 feet away from the three-point line to shoot it? And you get a chance to do this over and over and over again, and you're not, and you're missing it, you know what I mean? And you're not going cold. It should be one shot cold. It should be one bad dunk attempt before getting hot cold. Do you get what I'm saying? Like... There just has to be a system of checks and balances. And like I said, the class system and the inability for us to actually have a class system in 2K that makes people adhere to what it is that they have in terms of their stats, that's the reason why the game dies every year. That's the reason why people go back and play Fortnite. That's the reason why last year 2K had to send out an email and basically say, okay, uh, why did you stop playing the game? You guys wouldn't need to send out an email like that if you made a game that made sense. The game is not fun if it doesn't make sense because things that make basketball sense are not in the game. And then you have a bunch of people that love basketball, want to play a basketball game, and the things that they know to be true about the game of basketball do not work in a video game. And because they don't work, now you've got this dichotomy of people just being like, well, you know, the heck with it. I'm going to go play something else. And that's just basically my biggest thing on it. Um, I, 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 I don't understand why the game has continued to be like this every single year. Like, I know that I feel like they kind of design, design it behind the Warriors or whatever it is to make the, you know, the whole game kind of feel like you're playing one of the Golden State Warriors. But this is, this, is, this is terrible. This is awful, you know. And the game is way better than last year. It's way better, and I probably should have said that at the beginning of the the soul session, uh, soul session or soul series. It's way better than the last year, but even with it being better than the last year, man, it's just certain things in the game that you can't let go on for months and months and months. Like if if this is about money, two K's got to understand something. If y'all just make a good game, we'll buy it. I mean, obviously, you proved to us that even if the game isn't that great, we'll buy it anyway. But that's because we don't have any other options. But if y'all make a great game, nobody, people won't have a problem with spending money on VC. But then you spend money on VC, you get cheated. Let me, let me, I want to close it out by basically saying this, right? That's what I was talking about with the class system. Let's say you're a magical user in an MMORPG, right? So you wield magic, you'll, but your de- your defense isn't that good. So you can do all these kind of magic spells or whatever it is. Defense isn't that good. 
as you upgrade your player, your defense increases a little bit. But yet and still, if you run across a berserker, you have to keep your distance. If you don't keep your distance, you can take more hits than you could before. But because he's a berserker and he's your quote-unquote Achilles heel, if he starts whacking you too many times, you're out of there. So with 2K, if the system worked the way it was supposed to, let's say, take me for example. I'm a shot crane slasher, 6'6", 210. If I have a 6'6", sharpshooter on me, that's also, let's say, the same height and weight. If my vertical is an 89 and this sharpshooter's vertical is a 67, why is it that he can block me? Why does that make any sense? Not from a jump shot perspective. I understand the jump shot, but I'm talking about I'm already in the air. The took off flight school. How is it that this guy can block me if I'm in takeover? Explain it to me. Because from what you, so what you're telling me is that my vertical doesn't matter, right? That's essentially what you're saying. You're saying my vertical doesn't matter. My driving dunk doesn't matter. My contact dunk doesn't matter. My layup rating doesn't matter. Okay? So, just like an example of the Magic Wielder and the Berserker, right? For the Magic Wielder, you got to keep your distance. You got to keep your distance. You got to cast the right spells. You got to slow them down. You got to hit them with certain things. Boom, boom, boom. You take the Berserker out, right? With a slasher, how do you stop a slasher from dunking if you're sharp? You stop the slasher by dunking from dunking by stopping him from taking off in the air. If this guy takes off in the air, it's over. So you as a sharp have to play the best defense you can on ground to keep this guy from getting his one, two to take off and get into the air. Because once he gets into the air, from a rating standpoint, you can't compete. I got 20 plus points on this guy from a vertical standpoint. But for some reason, we both can equip the same layer package or we can ex- equip similar layer packages. Like if we both put default swing on, we both jump the same height on the layups. And that there is what is inherently wrong with what is happening in the state of the game today. That's what's wrong. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, you know, I know I talked for a little bit, talked about a couple key things that I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, I just want to say, um, you know, again, I enjoy playing the game. I'm not an expert at playing the game. I'm not a developer, you know, and I understand the developer's points of view. You know, it's easy to make a video and just rant and preach and all that kind of stuff. And I understand that. But I want the developers also to understand this. Every year y'all make this game, right? We have fun playing it. But when you put these broken things into the game, right and then you don't fix them but you fix all the vc glitches you have time to put in over three or four hundred new dance moves into a game dance moves but you won't fix the core gameplay like it's just it's mind-boggling to consumers who are loyal to playing the best basketball product on the market it's just mind-boggling and you know, I understand I don't have a degree or, you know, a background in game making and all that kind of stuff. But there's to me, there just has to be some sort of understanding of proper time allocation within the game. Those dance moves and stuff, they're cool, but they're not the reason why I keep getting on 2K and playing. I keep getting on there and playing because I want to compete. I want to play against other people. I want to see if I can challenge myself. I want to see if I can win. That's why people play the game they don't play it just to, for the aesthetics the aesthetics are cool and uh, you know we appreciate you adding them but there's got to be an a firm understanding of like a game that people want to play and you know that's just my opinion on it um everybody uh, out there listening to this stay positive um you know stay healthy um 
all you know just try to be positive be positive people you don't need you know it's a video game at the end of the day like there's no need to to like take it to heart or be negative or you know make the community negative or whatever it is like it's a video game man just you know enjoy it have fun um you know hopefully they fix some of the stuff that's going wrong with it like i said major improvement from last year but still there's just some things in it that just i mean yikes like sometimes it could just be awful um but other than that you know much much better product than last year can't wait to make another samurai soul session we putting it out as soon as i come up with another topic or something to think of um like i said you know keep keep the negativity out of the community everybody stay positive stay blessed um and happy saturday